Welcome to Episode 2 of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. Today, our very own David Stocken peels back the onion and answers the question, what is a grounding or earthing electrode? All right, so that's a great question. What is a grounding or earthing electrode? Uh, well, technically, it's any connection to the earth, uh, electrical connection to the earth, uh, I should be clear, uh, whether it's intentional or not. Um, but traditionally, we like to think of them uh, more in lines of like a ground rod. Um, so classically, we would install a long uh, metal object and it's often covered with a copper coating that copper coating is there for primarily for corrosion reasons not necessarily for electrical reasons but we drive those uh, rods into the ground and we have various rules for how these electrodes should be installed um, depths and distances and lengths etc etc uh, that is the classic the earth rod uh, the ground rod that's the classic uh, understanding of a grounding electrode but there are many other ones that are out there. Uh, and one of the primary ones that we're utilizing all the time is our concrete foundations in our building. It's probably the actual biggest and most used uh, electrode out there in the world right now is actually our foundations. So our footings, our slabs, are uh, oftentimes are contained filled with steel rebar inside of them. And that steel rebar can provide a very effective uh, grounding mechanism. They are often very deep, they're long, they're vast, uh, they have lots of contact with the earth. There's again a series of rules. Obviously the actual thing that's conductive is the steel. Um, so you have to have a connection to that steel in order to utilize this. Uh, the steel uh, then passes through the concrete. So if you have a vapor barrier uh, this is a plastic barrier to prevent moisture from entering into the building. You could imagine a basement, for example, might be surrounded by a plastic uh, vapor barrier in order to prevent water from see seeping in and flooding the basement. Well, if you have that, then obviously that won't count, right? You've prevented the electricity. The, uh, any electricity that might go down the steel rebar to the concrete would then hit a piece of plastic and would not be able to dissipate out into the earth. And again, one of our primary goals, and uh, we've talked about this in other videos, if you watch the other ones, um, you know, we free an electron from its orbit. Uh, that electricity wants to, from, from the orbit of an atom, that electricity wants, those electrons want to get back to an atom. Where do we have a lot of atoms? The Earth. So they use our grounding system to find their way back to uh, an atom in the Earth. And if we block those with the piece of plastic or sheeting or something, then it's no longer a, an effective electrode. So our primary electrode we tend to classically think is an earth rod. Um, the next one that we tend to use the most in our systems are actually concrete encased electrodes or our footings, slabs, rebar. Um, and there's some rules on those. They have to be in contact with the earth. You can't put a vapor barrier on them. Another one is a plate. And these are uh, copper plates that are placed in the ground. Um, if you've seen our video on the sphere of influence, you might know, uh, recognize immediately that a, a, a ground plate will have a very small sphere of influence, uh, but they can handle a fair amount of amperage uh, out into the soil because they have a nice surface area. Uh, so there can be some good reasons for putting ground plates, but generally speaking, we tend to avoid installing those. We prefer ground rods. Um, other ones are uh, what might be called a chem rod or an electrolytic electrode. Um, these are electrodes that utilize a two inch copper pipe filled with a desiccant. They suck moisture out of the air and maintain um, a, a backfill material, typically uh, bentonite clay. 
and maintain moisture levels in that so it stays in contact with the earth. Those are very efficient and effective electrode systems, although fairly pricey. And there's reasons you may need them and reasons you may not. But the most efficient and effective electrode system known to, to us is the ground ring. And this is where you place a complete copper loop in the soil around your structure. And there's a variety of reasons why these are very efficient and effective. Not only do they maximize your sphere of influence for a given area of soil, they also tend to help protect uh, you from uh, uh, step and touch voltage issues, uh, lightning ground strikes where you have scalar potentials that are forming across the earth, and they balance differences in potential across your structure very efficiently and effectively. Uh, we're not going to get into those all those little engineering factors today. That's something we'll do for another uh, video down the road. But having a loop around your structure eliminates these differences in potential, and that's usually the biggest concern we have, particularly for people who have high electronic systems uh, inside their structures that they want to protect, where they have a lot of Cat5 cables. Um, so we find a lot of calls for ground rings. Um, out there in the, in the uh, grounding and earthing world. Um, and those are very, very valuable, and you should definitely consider them if you're in high lightning areas or in a, have a high-tech environment. You should certainly want to be considering put, installing a complete ground loop. Um, so in summary, a earthing electrode or grounding electrode is, is any object that ties electrically ties your system to the earth or soil, whether you mean it to or not. For example, fence posts could be an, an electrode that's tying to the ground. You may not even realize it's doing it, but it is. Um, those connections to the earth, we have vital reasons to have them. And then on the other side of the equation, sometimes we don't really need them so much on other equations, but that's a, another topic um, for a different uh, uh, video. But I'll, I'll leave, at, leave you with this. Um, what is the grounding electrode for the International Space Station, right? Um, and yet it's full of electronics and it works just fine. Um, so we have reasons to have earthing and grounding electrodes, and then we have reasons we don't need them all at the same time. And understanding those differences of why you need them and why you don't need them is vital, particularly at the electrical engineering level. You certainly need to have a good understanding of what their purposes are, uh, which is primarily... Uh, ground faults uh, to, to eliminate ground faults, but mostly uh, objectionable currents, transients, and harmonics. So um, that's a brief summary of grounding electrodes. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you want to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. We'll see you next time.